Joe at the 100, how are you? It is Sunday, January 16th, 2022, and this is, uh, you, you get an extra couple of days here, um, so tomorrow we'll be celebrating the life of Martin Luther King, and we should all take pause and celebrate the, the many things that he did for us as a society. Um, it also has an impact on each of us as individuals. Um, we should really show lots of gratitude, I know my Life is much more enriched uh, because of the many things that he has done. And uh, so anyways, for those of you guys that are new to JR200, um, this is the way we roll. So I have these weekly lectures. Basically what I do is I, I just kind of go through the assignments and, and help guide you in terms of the approach. Um, you uh, get to the assignments right here. I'll be giving updates about, um, you know, hey, don't forget we have, you know, Little papers do here. These are the two short writing assignments and then the final paper. I'll also update you at any point in time as the midterms approach and give you more, more um, input on terms of that. All right? Very cool. If you ever want to uh, contact Julia or I, anybody else in the crew, uh, let us know. We'll do it very, via Zoom. And uh, as Julia indicated, you know, things are looking better right there. You know, I, am, uh, I think you have hope that... You know, um, within the week, maybe two weeks, we'll be back semi-normal wearing masks until we get rid of this thing. Okay? Very cool. Awesome. Uh, anyways, best class you're ever going to take. I promise you that. So uh, what we do every week is you go in here and this is just, you know, self-paced. You know, you do it at 2 o'clock in the morning. doesn't matter when you do it. You just stay on, on, on track, on game. You remember, oh, yeah, it's that time of, of the week. I need to go in there and do Jero 200. Okay? So you go in and you see everything is lined up in terms of the week, all right? So this starts Monday, January 17th, okay? This one right here starts Monday, January 20th, okay? You, you're more than welcome to work ahead, okay? Um, uh, the way it works, uh, you can see, I'll go a week in advance right here, right here. And is that an echo? All right. My lecture would go right there, but if you think you can just handle on yourself, you read up on the materials. At the same time, what you do is you open your quiz, and then you do the discussion. And for full credit on discussion, one primary post to the prompt. Here's the prompt. Um, and then you go back in there, okay, um, and you uh, then uh, you know, give commentary um, on your classmates' threats, all right? So you do replies, and you do three of those to get full credit. So we just divvy it up, um, 0.75 points for the primary reports and then uh, post, and then 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25 for the three replies you do to separately to your classmates, okay? Awesome. Look at the syllabus for the breakdown in terms of the weighted total. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the approach, okay? So I'm a week ahead of schedule here. So I'll do the video for this, this one then. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into week two, because here we are, we're, we're starting week two. Um, so we go here, um, we're gonna go from trend five to end note, okay? Um, so what I would do um, is I would go ahead and I would just open my reading quiz like so. I would hit begin, okay, awesome. So now I would look over the questions that I got. Every single week, we have a, a pool of multiple choice questions. These same questions show up on the midterm and the final, okay? We'll guide you through that. Don't worry about that. Uh, but you have your five questions right here. We have a pool of about 25 questions randomly drawn. Every time you take the quiz, they're going to be different, okay? So you just kind of look them over. Which country has the lowest public pension incentive for men to leave the labor market, all right? So that's going to come up, okay? That's a big issue in terms of business majors and econ majors. We look at global economics. That's the big one right there, okay? Because um, the pension system is such a drain on the overall um, kind of spreadsheet, uh, quick in books, so to speak, for each country, all right? That would be the gross domestic product. You have money coming in, and you got money going out, and you hope you're balanced, okay? All right. So th that's what I would do. I would look through each one of the which country has the highest pension expenditure as a, as a percentage of their gross domestic product. So this is obviously we're going into economics in this particular section, okay? On and on and on. You know, what, what are many countries doing to reform their old age insurance programs and to enhance income for older people, all right? So this is something that's um, uh, a big ticket item doesn't matter which president is running our country, doesn't matter who's in Congress, it's always open to discussion. And that is um, 
the, the Medicare system, Social Security system, okay, and other forms of entitlement, all right? So, because they cost a lot of money. Right? That's outgoing money, and the only way you're going to keep it going is to bring money in through taxes. All right, so that's how I would go about that. So then I would just go back in here. I would hit Blackboard for me. I'd go right back into my course. Okay, so now I've got it open once and twice. So I would go back and forth from the quiz to the actual course. I'm going to go to the weekly assignments. And the only difference is this time um, I'm going to go deal with the reading assignment. All right, so for, for, for this particular week, we just have one item. Other weeks you have more items. You'll see that coming down the, uh, the pipe. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to open my PDF file in Adobe Acrobat, and it's game on, okay? All righty, so well, I'm going to go like this and scroll downward. I'm going to look at my table of contents. Now, last week, if you remember, we went through aging and population trend five, all right? So we actually go from trend six through EndNote, all right? We're going to look at the change in family structure, okay? What's going on? You guys are living this. And a lot of it is sociological, right? When I say sociological, what I mean is it really de depends on your culture, you know. Now, me growing up, you know, you know, average white guy, Gavacho, okay. Um, you know, I'm a, a third generation Irishman. Um, we are the American way, and the American way in our culture, um, in terms of family, is we go visit our elders, but we're not necessarily living with them, okay. Um, hopefully, that's going to change, okay. Um, reflect back on the stuff we looked about because, you know, as we get older here, okay, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of older people, okay? I think um, one of the things that we're going to have to deal with rather than create assisted living facilities is we got to create an incentive to have multi-generational housing. And, and if you're a real estate developer, this is the future, my friends. You know, you create these bomb houses that have separate wings for great-grandma, grandma, grandma, kids, everything, and then a central hub where it all works, okay? All right, so that, and a big part of that is then caregiving, okay? There's gonna be caregiving for your children, but also as we scroll down here, there's the caregiving that, that, that does pop up when you have these non-communicable diseases of aging, okay? Right now with this massive communicable disease, okay, with uh, COVID-19, the disease consequent to getting the, the infected from the virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, there was a certain amount of caregiving support that was really needed, okay? For example, grocery shopping, okay? Um, for example, um, uh, you know, taking care of uh, people when they get sick, okay? Um, the fact that we were kind of restricted and weren't supposed to go out, all right? Um, yeah, so, so you, know, you know, certainly I was able to, to rely on other resources, but it takes money for that, you know? And for people that don't have money, you depend on family. All right, cool. So uh, we scroll past that, okay? Um, we do know that there's a, more of a significant burden on you as, you know, the grandchildren, as the 20-year-olds, uh, because each generation is, in, in, at least in U.S. society, and this is happening worldwide, it's percolating. The less developed you are as a country, okay, you're going to have more children. But guess what? Progress moves on, okay? And so what's happening is, in developed countries, and then what's coming down the pipe for undeveloped countries is you have fewer and fewer people in each generation, but you still have people living longer, so somebody is going to have to take care of them, either indirectly through society and tax dollars or directly, meaning the burden falls on fewer shoulders. You know? So instead of having you know, four or five aunties and uncles that are going to help out grandma and grandpa, maybe it's your parents and one other person. Maybe it's just your parents alone. Right? And they're doing this balancing act of caregiving. All right? And that punts us into the next section, which is the change in family structure. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. So um, when we look at things, I'm going to decrease the sizes so I can see it. Okay, um, We start looking at countries. Uh, like I said, fewer, fewer generations are going to have um, few, if any, siblings. A lot of you guys are only children. Okay. Um, and so what happened, they, they, we used to uh, look at um, uh, population dynamics, and we would just throw down the numbers of people in that age group, okay? And we used to see that there was tons of kids, okay? Just, you know, here one side is male, the other side is female. It's called aging pyramid. As we go up each age group, 
it, there were fewer and fewer people. So it was in, to, to you at the grandma and grandpa, there's only one or two or whatever. Okay, I'm just throwing that out there. But societal level, there's maybe, you know, 500,000 or whatever. It was shaped like a pyramid. But what's happening now is beginning to shape like a beam pole where there's just as many old people as there are middle-aged and young people creating extra burden, all right? So that's what this first section is all about, okay? Then we look at, you know, modern society, okay? It is what it is. Um, we have uh, changing family dynamics, like uh, divorcing and, uh, and new family structures. Um, we have a lot of people who are not married, okay? Um, and who's there to help them? These are all these different factors to think about. A lot of people um, don't have any children, nobody to care for them, yet they will potentially at some point in their lives um, have lots and lots of um, trouble and are going to need help, all right? So these are all these things to look about, okay? So like I said, we have uh, in the modern society, the higher rates of divorce, uh, uh, remarriage, there's a blended family, stepchildren, brother relationships. It complicates things, okay? All righty. Well, if we look at, you know, the canary in the coal mine for all this happening, like we saw in the previous chapters, um, Japan came out of the blocks and they were um, as a society, as a country, the fastest to show this transition to having this imbalance of, of more older people and less younger people, okay? And so this is totally impacting uh, the living arrangements, okay? So we see right here the living arrangements of people age 65 and over during this period, and there's a new study coming out soon, but this is the period looking at 40-year period, um, and we can see the transition that happened, okay? So we see... Um, the brown box right here, um, that's in an institution. So never, never, never happened in Japan, okay? Um, less than 2%. Uh, living alone, again, that was infrequent, okay? Living with the spouse only and, and married uh, with a child or other relative. And that was the dominating profile, okay? This, this family collective where we all looked out for each other, okay? Now we can see the transition that's happened going from... Um, this is over one, two, three, four, five decades. And it's if you were to see the projection over the last 20 years, we'd see it would be projecting downward over here, okay? Um, more and more people are being forced to live in an institutional setting with no family support, okay? A lot of people are living alone, okay, which is really, really tough, okay? Then you, you depend on, for example, the neighborhood to look out for them. Uh, more and more uh, people are, of course, living just with their spouse and, and fewer and fewer um uh, family collectives. Okay, so we, that's that's a big change, um, and that's the way of the U.S. too. A lot of other countries, you know, my my a lot of my friends uh, have, you know, ancestry from Mexico. A lot of my friends have ancestry ancestry from uh, South Korea and China. You know, there's there's a more of a pull towards the family collective. However, when you get to the USA, um, things change. Okay, so. If we're no more dependent on ourselves, as we see here, we're living alone, living with a spouse, okay? Then we're also more dependent on ourselves in terms of income. Um, you don't have anybody else to look out for yourself but you, okay? And so that's what this is going on right here. And what's happening is, is countries are, um, are creating incentives to stay out there working longer. For those countries that don't, they have a gigantic economic burden. All right, so this is a global issue. A lot of you guys are econ majors and business majors, big time issue, okay? Because uh, there are a lot of countries we can see, like um, the Nordic countries, okay, the like Netherlands and Sweden. We can look at the uh, uh, Mediterranean countries, look okay? at Italy and Spain, okay, um, where there was a guaranteed income stream if you retired not from the workplace, but from government, all right? So we have Social Security. This was like Social Security on rocket fuel, all right? These government pension systems where people would, would be able to get the full a guaranteed income from, say, age 55 on. It's, it's very old school, written into their old legislation, and now they're paying this huge financial price for that, okay? Because guess what? People are living longer, right? Uh, all right. Um, so that's what this um, whole chapter is all about, okay? And we're looking at uh, the precariousness, as is indicated right here, of, of financial security in old age, okay? 
and, and they, they talk about you know a couple of examples right here all right um, so um, we have this issue we have a shrinking workforce as indicated here on the bottom relative to um, the number of pensioners okay all right so um, is all that money in terms of Social Security or, or other pensions from other governments just sitting in the bank earning interest no okay this is a pay forward system meaning that um, that this year when I pay my Social Security taxes okay that money goes directly into paying the pensioners that are drawing from it right now all right all right there's fewer and fewer workers more and more people drawing Social Security because we live longer all right you see what's gonna happen here we're gonna have to raise taxes we're gonna have to do something okay or or and this has been this uh, movement up front is that we um, we uh, decrease the percentage of the Social Security you get if you retire too early okay so right before back in the day everybody retired at age 65 and you got what was called the hundred percent um, of your Social Security okay um, now um, it's right around it's um, 66 67 it's 67 years of age you get 100% and you get punished you get penalized okay if you retire early so let's say I decided at 62 I can't take this anymore I'm gonna start drawing from Social Security I'm only gonna get about 70% of what I would would have gotten if I waited till I was 67 and if I wait till I'm 70 I get a bump all right, I get 120% of what I would get at 67. So there's an incentive for me to keep working, okay, in terms of finances. Either way, Social Security is not enough to live on in our country, okay? It's just supposed to be this backup for hard times. Sadly, there's a huge percentage that that is not the case, all right? Okay, so, um, well, this is just a discussion of workforce, workforce versus people drawing on the pension. So just read through it, okay? So we have this kind of this policy right now, okay? Boom, policymakers have to think about um, supporting these pension funds, okay? Um, There's the official retirement age, okay? And, um, and maybe uh, some awards that would be given, you know, like you know, incentives to retire later. Okay, and that's what the first part's all about. Okay, and so they kind of go through it right here. Okay, um, and they go through what's going on in different countries. So you just kind of look through this right here. All right, and um, in the in the bottom line, you know, obviously the life expectancy has expanded. That's what they're talking about here. Okay, and so we're looking right here. Um, this is uh, looking at the European Union. We're just looking at examples, okay? Uh, we're looking at the employment rate, okay? Ages 55 to 64, okay? Because, okay, it's harder and harder to live on this. And again, it's it's not perfect. Obviously, the pension system that uh, that is being doled out uh, in the, the European Union. So more and more people are working, okay? And uh, we can see this upward trend right here. They still, um, uh, we're looking at 55 to 64. That's, you know, these are really low rates compared to the U.S., okay? So they get a much bigger pension than we do. There, there's, you know, they, the incentive to not work is too large in these other countries, okay? All righty. So um, let's look at um, the public pension incentive to leave the labor market, okay? That's exactly what I'm talking about, and we saw that as one of my questions on my quiz, all right? So I would go back, you know, and find that question on my quiz by just going back to my browser right over here and finding the quiz, and here it is. I would be, I would be going ahead and answering that, but I'm not doing that right now because I'm reading my article. Let me get back to the, my PDF file here. No, that's not it. I can get rid of that one. I was already looking at that. Um, let's go back to my PDF here. I got too many windows open, guys, because I'm just uh, I'm, I'm craving information. All right. Okay. So um, percent of men age 55 to 65 not working. Okay. In Japan, okay, um, there's not a great pension system, so people work longer. Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, France, they're doling out way too much money, so people are bailing on the workforce. You see, we're over here, okay, we're on the other side as well, all right? Uh, um, so um, for us, you know, it's actually close, you know, getting closer to 30% of people um, 
have left a, have left a labor market compared to you know some other countries where it approaches 70. Why them? Why are they getting out so much? And why are we sticking around? We don't have our cost of living is too high. We don't get enough from Social Security. Their cost of living is um, more commensurate with the amount of pension that they're getting. So they're like they're like screw it, I'm out of here. Okay, awesome. So we have an evolution then of these social insurance systems, and that's what that we're talking about right here in this chapter. So this again goes through, um, you know, the the public policy, and they look at different countries with different experiences. Okay and different strategies, okay? And we, we're looking down here at, um, at, at the European Union again, and, and what's happening is, you know, um, is uh, like I said, if you have fewer people to pay into the pension system, then your, pay, then your payroll taxes have to increase, and that's what they're talking about right there, okay? Um, so you, you raise taxes for revenue, okay? And then you try and induce legislation to, um, to uh, to uh, maybe extend people in in, in as uh, as workers or, or, or uh, lower the retirement rate. Okay, so we're looking at the the economic impact. Okay, across lots and lots of different countries in Europe, you see um, there's not a big incentive to retire in Ireland. There's a huge incentive to retire in early in Italy. So we're looking at the um, the percentage of the gross domestic product that is, uh, where, this is where you're subtracting money from the balance sheet that is a country. And you see that Italy has the highest percentage of money going the wrong direction in terms of outgoing funds to fund retirees, okay? Um, and it just depends on the country, all right? All right, um, China um, obviously has a huge impact because they have such a giant population. China also has a huge impact because way back when, when they were trying to control their population, they had the one child policy. Fewer people born, fewer people in the workforce to pay into paying for the financial slash social support of older people in that country. They've actually turned around and they're now creating incentives and trying to get people to have children because it was a broken, they didn't, they, they were trying to deal with the immediacy of overcrowding um, and, and, and the country not able to, um, to you know, support um, uh, employment and just feeding and everything else. Um, but now what's happening right here, we see um, the ratio of workers to pensioners right here, okay? So there's fewer and fewer people born more and more people that are past the point of working. And so they're completely dependent on the government for financial support. And you can see this is completely upside down here, okay? And so that means that, that more of your individual paycheck, we see right here, um, these guys down here in this range right here of this uh, kind of maroon -y line, they're paying a lot more of their paycheck to fund the pension of these older workers, okay? So this is a huge economic challenge, all right? Global economic challenge, and that's what this chapter goes into, okay? So we look at the solution, okay? So we're gonna go over each of these in our class, okay? So this right here is, is super important, okay? Um, you have to be able to look out for yourself, right? Now, I, I am gonna beat you guys over the head with this. A lot of you are B majors, business majors, martial majors, and one of your first jobs out of the blocks is you're gonna be, um, uh, a money manager, a financial planner, a wealth manager, okay? And this is where you take people's money where they have pulled it aside and they want to invest and you invest it for them for a fee, okay? Sometimes that fee is like 2%, okay? Um, the reality is if you like doing video games, you can do this on your own. You open up and we're gonna train you how to open up your own Vanguard account, your own Fidelity account, your own whatever account okay you you choose the uh, uh, uh investment company that is going to allow you to use their online system the difference is instead of paying one and a half to two percent fee okay that's of my total income this could be twenty thirty forty thousand dollars a year just to have somebody lose my money for me all right a financial planner doing the quote unquote investing and the buying and trading um i can do it myself all right, through this online system, and the fees are instead of, of 2% or 0.01% or 0.005%, next to nothing, all right? So I'll pay 
instead of thousands of dollars, I'll pay a couple hundred dollars for the for the ability to use their website. It's super fun, all right? All right, so that being said, we're looking again, remember those countries that were like uh, in trouble, trouble, trouble back over here, okay? Italy, Poland, Germany, all these guys, okay? So um, uh, their gross domestic product is being burdened by outgoing funds to pay uh, the, the pension system. We come down here, let's incentivize saving, okay? So we can see that in Sweden, they've made a huge effort. Italy, Spain, Greece, over here, you know what? People are not putting their money out to save because there's too much pension coming in. So over here, you incentivize just like we do in our country. And we're going to go over this. The older you get, the more more opportunity, whether it's individual retirement accounts, IRAs, Roth IRAs, which we're going to train you how to do right now. Um, um, when you decide where you're going to work, maybe you're going to go to a company that has matching funds called a 401k or or if you're a, a nonprofit like uoc a 403b it's a big thing to consider okay and so what we see here is more and more of uh these individuals and these 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 countries that are trying to liberate themselves from this burden are incentivizing um people to take their own money and invest either in stocks or big 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 giant bundles of categories of stocks called mutual funds which are the easy way the low risk way for investing, you know, when you you know you have to be like a big time high roller gram gambler to invest in invest in individual company stocks. I'm just telling you right now. All righty, so we're looking right here. All right, the uh, the fact is, all right, when you're a little bambino here at age zero, looking at this teal colored line, okay, you're not consuming a whole lot other than I don't know a little bit of breast milk, maybe some some formula. Other than that, you're cool. Diapers, that kind of stuff, okay? Then as you get older and older and older, you're, you are more of a consumer, okay? Which, if you're going to be a consumer, you're going in and out, burger, you're getting clothes, you're partying, you hit asymptote, and you have a steady state of consumption right here, okay? All right. Uh, so that being said, okay, are you, you know, as a 10-year-old, as a are you bringing in the bacon? No, you're not. Okay, so that's what this uh, all the green line is all about here. So you're a major consumer, but you're not really balancing your consumption with the income you bring in in terms of labor market to about right here. Okay, then boom. Now you get to the point that you're I am right now here. I'm bringing in so much money. I'm paying for my kids. <laughs> Julie's paying for the kids. Okay, on and on and on. We're putting money away. We're, we're in good shape. Okay, and then um, oftentimes people, you know, get tired of it. They start peeling back the amount of income that they bring in terms of labor, sometimes out of choice, sometimes not, okay? Um, and then you see that your consumption level comes over here. So you're still, now you're in this dependent range. You're not bringing in the money, but you're still consuming. Something's got to change, okay? If I put away enough money in retirement, I'm all good, okay? If you haven't, this is where society has to kick in or you as an individual have to support your parents or grandparents, okay? Same drill here in terms of young kids. All right, so... That's about it, guys. Um, in terms of this, this is just an end note that just kind of talks about what's going on in, in terms of that this particular study. We then want you to consume all this, and we want you to go in here. Um, and this is just a reiteration of what's going down, all right? This is the dependency, okay, uh, ratio. So we can look at right here that on, on a percentile basis as a, as a society globally, and this is also... Uh, uh, this is more and more reflective of uh, industrialized, westernized countries, but the other ones are catching up to us, okay, is you have fewer and fewer children that are dependent, okay, for, for the income being in by the workforce and more and more older people. So there's got to be a switch. You know, when I was growing up, they were making elementary schools. What are they making now? They're making assisted, assisted living facilities to reflect this change. And as an entrepreneur, you think about that, business majors. As a real estate developer, you think about that. Okay, we don't need as many preschools. We more we need more retirement facilities. Okay, awesome. Okay, and then um, you know how quickly this happened. This transition is happening. Okay, so you can see um, uh, this again was from the prior readings, but you can see this this very very rapid transition in these countries right here. Slow transition where you there was a, a chance for a slow ad adaptation. These countries are losing their minds trying to make things work right now, okay?
Awesome. And even the USA, we were slow, but you know, we could have done much better. Okay. Um, you see India and China, you know, it is what it is. You have population momentum, meaning if you have ungodly numbers of people, even if you slow down the reproduction rate, you're still going to have ungodly numbers of people that are in this kind of older age group. And that's what we're talking about here in terms of millions. Okay. Do realize, okay, when we look at the global transition, so in about 20, 30 or so, India is projected to take over China as the most populous nation in the country. And then guess who's right behind India? All right. All right. So that's an African country. African country. Okay. So yes, yes. It's, um, uh, Nigeria is going to take over as the most populous country in the world around 2050, 2060. It's what you're going to have to be dealing with then as, as kind of a global community. All right. So now... Look at what we talk about right in here, and then we consider um, uh, Japan, where things happened so quickly, okay? So it happened really fast for Japan, but unlike these guys, it happened a long time ago. So they are the canary in the coal mine, okay? They are the beta site, okay? And we can see what has ha is happening in, in Japan, okay? Um, Japan is dying. All work, no sex means no future. That's it's an interesting uh, 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 little documentary, a couple minutes long. Um, this is the crisis and how they're dealing with it. Okay, and um, if you have a Business Insider uh, subscription, you can look at the short article. But if not, uh, we have the PDF file for you to download right there. All right, guys, very cool. All right, I want you guys to have fun with this. Okay, um, let's see if the Rams. Uh, can beat the cards. Uh, I know uh, the Buccaneers just killed Philadelphia. You know, there you go, Tom Brady. Love him or leave him. Okay, and um, uh, that's it for now. So I'm gonna say peace. All right, and uh, good luck with everything, guys. And we'll see you next time.